Oh, so in the last video we we didn't quite finish writing the complete solution to exercise 3 but you can understand what we were going to write we came across a situation like this right a dot b dot a dot b this is equal to a dot a dot b dot b then we used the cancellation law lemma 232 two, to get rid of first of a from the left and then of b from the right ultimately giving us b dot a is equal to a dot b for all elements a and b in g so that uh, from there you can conclude that g is abelian so that you just have to write that and the solution will end there okay so now let's look at exercise 4 now this exercise comes with a star it indicates that it is uh, somewhat more difficult than the usual exercises there are some exercises which have which come with two stars so they are supposed to their solutions are supposed to need something either from a portion which is much more advanced than uh, where we are now or from outside the subject itself from outside algebra so let us see what this exercise is all about if g is a group in which v assume or not v assume in which we have something like this for three consecutive integers i and for all a and b in g show that g is abelian So you can see that this one and the previous exercise they are going in a direction opposite to what we had in exercise 2 there we were given an abelian group G and we were asked to prove that this equation is true for all a and b and for all integers n this was exercise 2 so here g is given to be abelian and we proved this in 3 we were given that this equation is true for all a and b in g then we proved that g is abelian so it's in the opposite direction here also we are going in that opposite direction except in place of 2 we have 3 consecutive integers so all we know is that such integers are given to exist however we don't really know whether this i or the 3 values of i any one of them is positive negative or 0 it, they can be anything okay so that is exercise 4 so let us now see the solution we are given a group G C 
such that this is one of the equations the other equation is i mean one more is this and still one more is true for some integer i and for all elements a and b in g so that's what we are given we can consider the integers to be i i plus 1 and i plus 2 this is i plus 2 okay so now we we will treat this as the first equation this as the second equation and this as the third equation and because we are going to refer to them using those adjectives first second and third okay so now from the first and second equations we get let us look at this product a dot b to the power i dot a dot b why suddenly we want to look at this product you will uh, come to know so if we apply associative law first inside we will get this then apply it once more that will give us this a dot oh sorry this is not a i should have a to the power i here okay so applying it once more we get this now from the first equation we can replace this with a dot b whole to the power i dot a dot b then we can use the first rule of exponents to write it like this to the power i plus 1 and that will be equal to using the second equation a to the power i plus 1 dot b to the power i plus 1 Then again use rule of exponents to have this a to the power i dot a dot b to the power i dot b and then finally we have to use associative law twice first we apply it and get this term And then once again we apply it, we get this. Now the next step is just like what we did here. Uh, use the cancellation laws. Now applying the cancellation laws, uh, if you want to, if you forgot what the cancellation laws are, you go to lemma 232, there you have the cancellation laws. We get 
So first we will get rid of a to the power i, then we will get rid of uh, oh this this was the first term. You treat this equal to this. You treat all those uh, things. You rub off the intermediate terms. You have this is equal to this. First you get rid of this a to the power i, and then you get rid of b. That will leave us with this. Okay. Now a similar job can be done with the second and third equation. You see what is the similarity? In the first equation, the exponent is one less than that in the second equation. Just like that, in the second equation, the exponent is one less than that in the third equation. So instead of actually going through all the calculations, we can write similarly and write the final conclusion. Similarly, using the second and third equations, Okay, what shall we get? We will get an exact similar thing, but because you see, here i has appeared because we have i in the first equation. Now, when you apply the second and third equation, I mean, when you use the second and third equation, then that role of i is now being played by i plus one. So we will have b to the power i plus one dot a is equal to a dot b to the power i plus 1. If you are not convinced, you are welcome to actually carry out the calculations. You will see that ultimately you end up with this. Okay. Hence, okay. So, but uh, what is our aim? Our aim is to show that G is abelian. So that means we have to show that A dot B is equal to B dot A. So let us consider this product A dot B dot B to the power I. You almost know where, what we have to do next. We will apply the associative law to write the product like this then use rule of exponent usual steps now this is where we need this second conclusion that we have got so in place of this we will write b to the power i plus 1 dot a and then again we are going to use uh, rule of exponents the first rule So that will be equal to b to the power i dot b uh, b to the power i dot b or uh, okay okay this will not give me anything b dot b to the power i note that i can write either b dot b b to the power i or b to the power i dot b because uh, i can change it, this i plus one and write it as one plus i that will not change anything because 1 plus i is equal to i plus 1. So you can notice one thing that the rules of exponent, the first one that we have proved actually tells us something else. Apart from this thing, it also tells us something more because in place of m plus n, I can write n plus n and the rule of exponent tells me this these two are equal so that means these two are equal so any two powers of any two integral powers of an element commute you can change their places that is one conclusion of the first rule of exponents so this dot a then again we use associative law Okay, now here 
we can use the first conclusion so in place of this part i can write this and that uh, one more use of the associative law gives us this now you look at the term with which we started and the one where we ended uh, this is b to the power i no? and we can we are in a position to use the right cancellation law so the right cancellation law gives us a dot b is equal to b dot a now since this is happening for all a and b in g so this proves that g is abelian hence g is abelian and the solution ends here you may wonder how one comes up with the exact steps of these calculations and the answer is no one really knows it comes from many trials and errors uh, one way of achieving something a mathematical result which you have been asked to prove is that you start with the hypothesis what is given to you and you look at the final conclusion you want to prove this so you start your back calculation from the final conclusion this is your final destination okay final destination and this is uh, from where you start your journey so you start from your final destination and take steps back and you try to reach a middle ground from where either you can easily get to the hypothesis or it's easy to reach that middle ground from the hypothesis then you can connect these two things and get a proof yeah, but it's easier said than done however in most of the cases we will see that it works and keep in mind it takes time so if you fail uh, if you for example fail to get a proof in two or three tries and you give up uh, then you won't achieve anything ever you will need hundreds and maybe thousands of tries months of work to get one single proof if it is really very difficult but that's how mathematics mathematics works So, an answer to this question, how one comes up with these steps, is just that, by trial and error. And as you work like that, you uh, struggle with many mathematical proofs, because after all, these are some small results. However insignificant they are, they are still mathematical results, which need actual rigorous mathematical proof. If you go through them, not going through a proof that is already given to you but you start a problem and then you start uh, thinking uh, about how you can solve that problem you do that again and again this practice will give you uh, some insights which ultimately will lead to experiences then you can use those experiences to your advantage later on as you gain more and more experience you will see that things fall in place in your mind itself okay so anyway uh, let's cut my rambling and let's get on with the actual work show that the conclusion of exercise 4 
does not follow that means this one the previous one if we assume the relation for just two consecutive integers so if in place of three consecutive integers we assume that in a group we have this relation true for only two consecutive integers i uh, nonetheless for all elements a and b but then there is no guarantee that the group will be abelian so that means in the for this exercise we have to produce a an example of a non abelian group in which these things are happening okay now to get the ex actual example we really need something which is far ahead in uh, section 210 the 10th section of the second exercise right now we are Uh, solving the problems at the end of the third section anyway it it is uh, just what it is so if you go to that section you will come across an example where this phenomenon happens so let me just write it you go and check that group out you will know that there actually this thing happens let g be the group of quaternion units from exercise 21 of section 210 from that exercise so essentially we are using that exercise uh in spite of the fact that uh, we are still far away from solving that exercise it appears in the section where we deal with permutation groups but still we we will be doing this type of things in this uh, in hartstein's in solving hartstein's exercise problems we may have to use we may be even forced to use some result which appears much later in the book so it's like the although i i will write the solution here but we won't have the solution complete it will only be complete when we solve this exercise but then you will see that uh, things fall in place that it is actually the case from that exercise we see that g is non abelian and the fourth power of every element is the identity for all g belonging to capital g okay thus for any a and b belonging to g we have 
a dot b whole to the power 4 is equal to this is identity because a dot b again will be an element in g which can be written as identity times identity so this becomes a to the power 4 dot b to the power 4 so we see that such a relation is true for all elements a and b and in place of i we can have 4 but we need one more integer and a dot b to the power 5 now using rules of exponent which is which are true in all groups we have this the further we go uh, the less i will mention this actual uh, things rules of exponent instead of saying something like that i will just simply write like this but by then you will have uh, accustomed with these things well well enough so this is equal to e so this becomes a dot b but then again a dot b can be written as e dot a dot e dot b in place of e we can write this so you see that uh, a similar equation or a similar relation is also true for the integer 5 so we have here two consecutive integers for which this thing is true for all elements a and b in g okay and the solution actually ends here because it shows that we can have a non abelian group g in which the given conditions are true okay but what about someone may object why don't i actually uh, tell something about the group yes uh, we are going to discuss the, about the group a little but i don't want to repeat things because here in this section in this exercise we will have to actually prove that uh, this group is a group the system given is a group and those things we have to prove so i will just sketchily go through the group at least tell you what the group is what its elements are and what the binary operation is the group consists of eight symbols minus i i minus j j minus k k you treat them as abstract symbols don't think minus one is uh, integer minus one or one is integer one don't think i is the imaginary unit that you come across when you study complex numbers although it will behave like that but still and don't think of these things as something that you already know from say vector algebra now the binary operation goes like this um, If we go in the counterclockwise direction, that is in this direction, then any two symbols will give us the third symbol that follows the sequence. In other words, if I have i dot j, I will have k. That is the definition. If I have j dot k, the answer is supposed to be i. If I have k dot i, the answer is j. What happens when we switch the, when we change the order? 
we have those elements but with a minus sign k dot j is minus i and i dot k is minus j what happens when we multiply an element with itself all of them are defined to be equal to minus 1 and what about these elements say if you multiply minus i and j you just treat the minus sign as you treat it with uh, when you have it uh, with real numbers say if i multiply minus i and j it is to be treated as minus of i times j i times j is k so we end up with minus k one can prove although i i have uh, presented this binary operation in a rather sketchy and incomplete way but you can understand we will do that in that exercise one can show that such a binary operation actually turns this set into a group and it's non abelian because i dot j is k but j dot i is minus k and k and minus k are considered to be two different symbols and this is an a non abelian group of order 8 where one can prove that the fourth power of any element is equal to the identity so that provides us with such an example those of you who have already gone through the ring theory videos in this channel they know that these uh, quaternion units are coming from a ring ring of the ring of real quaternions okay i i won't go uh, say anything more about this then we move on to exercise 6 in s3 give an example of two elements x and y such that x dot y square is not equal to x square dot y square so we have already seen in the second exercise that, that if this equals this for every x and y then the corresponding group is abelian but we already know that s3 is non abelian so we must come across two elements in it for which this happens that is these two terms are not equal these two things because otherwise it would be abelian and such things are this uh not that we have better names or better representations of these mappings than psi and phi which will come in section 210 where we treat these groups separately permutation groups um but for now we you, if you are wondering what these symbols are you recall our third example where we discussed many examples of groups there in the third example we defined these maps 
and we actually derived some relationships between them so this is equal to it can be written as psi dot phi dot psi dot phi okay now i i am not saying anything about these steps you know what we are doing psi dot phi okay now in the third example we have already proved that phi dot